Hello everybody, welcome to the video. Today we're playing on the C64 as you see by the screen, we're playing Nevertheless. Tremendous game, released by Houston, came out in 1987. It's difficult though, but I've tried streaming it and it was very, very difficult to read chat. So let's see how we do for a long play. But anyway, this is Jamie from Ordinance Games, Nevertheless, C64. Let's go. Okay, this is another game, this is Nebulous for the C64, a video game created by John N. Phillips and published by Houston Consultants in the late 1980s for various systems. The original 8-bit release received critical acclaim, in particular the C64 version received a gold medal awarded by the UK magazine Zap64. The game was released for Mega, Atari ST, Zelex Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, C64, Game Boy, NES, Atari 7800, Acorn Archimedes, Wii Virtual Console and MS-DOS, released in 1987, I was 5 when this game came out. Tremendous game, but very, very difficult. This is level one, which is the Tower of Eyes. You start the game off with three lives, and unfortunately, you do get a time limit. Now, you can actually kill some enemies, but you can't kill all of them. Some of them will just stun them. But you earn 100 points for destroying a bouncing ball. Now, some platforms will actually fall beneath you, but your character can also jump. Get to the top of each tower and blow it up. Now, I've got lots of statistics to read, but rule number one, let's get through this first level unscathed, shall we? On we go. And that blows it up. We had 42 seconds remaining. Level complete, time bonus, technique bonus, and extras bonus. Gain all the bonuses, and then you blow it up, and then you go into your submarine and go underwater. Catch some fish for bonuses, it says. Right, we have to shoot fish and put them into a bubble. Bubble, bubble style. Now, you can't actually die here, and there's no time limit here either. So put as many into bubbles as you possibly can, and then pop them with your submarine. All health is additional points. So shoot them, put them in the bubble, and then swim into them, and then pop them. Right, we go to the next tower. This is level 2, which is the realm of robots. We've got 120 seconds this time, a little bit more than last time. Now, Nebulous is a platformer game with some distinctive, unique features. The player controls a small green character called Pogo on a mission to destroy eight towers that have been built in the sea. We do this by planting bombs at the tower's peaks. Pogo's progress is hindered by enemies' obstacles which he has to avoid in order to reach the top of the tower. Including that enemy there, that one in particular, the one that actually comes on the screen every so often, but always at the level you currently are at. Now he'll do that for the entire game. And there's a similar enemy in Nebulous 2, which does exactly the same thing. Now you can't shoot him, but try and avoid him by using elevators, or using doors, if you time it correctly. So you've got to be moving all the time. Now that enemy won't appear on the scene if there's plenty of enemies on that section. He won't arrive. Right, on we go. Now these enemies going around here, you can't kill. So avoid them all costs. Not a particularly long level, but they are very generous with the time on this one. But one hit and we fall down one level. Which is worse in the second game. Take one hit, you fall multiple levels. There you go, go up the escalator, go in the door. That's another one done. Once again, we get unique extras and time bonuses. You get technique bonuses if you don't fall off any platforms. Right, we go into the water again. Okay, same rule as before. We need to shoot fish. This takes fish into a whole new level. So again, a well-timed shot. It doesn't have a fast rate of fire. Put them into a bubble and then pop them. Which is handy because the front of your submarine is actually quite sharp. Good for popping fish in bubbles. Right, there we go. We arrive at the next one. Next up is Trap of Tricks. We have 140 seconds. Now, all these bouncy balls you can kill except one. That one, you shoot it and it stops it rooted to its tracks for only a short period of time. Right, we've got to get down there with the help of that thing. The actual gameplay happens at each tower in turn. Pogo starts from the bottom and has to find his way to the top. The towers are cylinder shaped and have ledges on their outside. Either horizontal forming stairs or connected by elevators. Because of its cylindrical shape, the towers have no left or right edges. Instead, Pogo must walk around the tower. And he does it very, very well, but then so do the enemies. One hit and we fall down another level. Now, this game is difficult because sometimes it's very, tell it's very difficult to tell where the enemies are. So if you're going up in an elevator. So sometimes it is trial and error. Right, you can also shoot blocks. You earn 50 points for shooting a block. And this time, we have to, to progress up this elevator. Right, on we go. Keep moving, don't stay on one level for too long. And also, you do have certain problems with wind in this game, or slippery surfaces. Right, it's going absolutely superbly well. 77 seconds remaining, there's another one. There we go, bonus points activated. 
Boom, boom, pow. That's another one. There we go. In we go into the water for more additional bonuses. And these fish look more like prawns than fish. But there we go. 5,000 points hits you an additional life. There we go. Like a mini shoot em up. Underwater style. Nebula style. There we go. There's another one. Next level is a slippery slide, and we have 160 seconds. A graphical innovation, and perhaps the most notable feature about the game, is when your character moves left or right, it always stands in the center of the visible screen. Instead of a sprite moving, the tower behind him will rotate in a clockwise or counterclockwise with a consensus sense of depth. This was noted favorable in the reviews of the game. Now, it's absolutely essential you memorize what platforms fall beneath you when you stand on them. And also, don't stand in one place for too long. The enemy going around the tower will get you. But then sometimes you need to use him wisely, and this is another section, or level should we say, where you do need to use him wisely, but not yet. In the meantime, we've got to shoot these blocks, 50 points for each. Now when you press the fire button down, your character will shoot. Press forward and fire, and your character will jump. Shoot the blocks, go through the door, and if you time it right with that enemy going around the circle, you'll avoid him nicely. Or you just use an elevator, that also take you out of his way. Right, enemy at the top, goes round in circular motions, and you cannot kill him. We go up the top, wait for the elevator to go down, and wait for the right time, and we go through that door. We have 97 seconds remaining. Right, in the door we go. Right, we're nearly there. More hazards. Very, very challenging indeed. Right, on we go. Right, jump over that one, that breaks. Shoot that one, that kills. Up we go. Right. We've got two bouncing balls, but also, very, very near from here, we do need that enemy going around in circular motion. So get in the right place, and wait here. Now, along his way to the top of the tower, Pogo encounters many different enemies, mostly shaped like basic geometric shapes. Pogo can shoot at most of the enemies, but while some of them, you cannot be shot. Contact with the enemies, not Pogo, off the ledge below, and if there's no ledge below, Pogo falls into the sea and drowns. But not here, we're blowing up another tower. There we go. Successful! You're killing tower machine! Nevertheless, Pogo, in we go. Right, time to catch some more fish! This guy does it on a daily basis. Right, at the moment we have 18,700 points. And quite a few lives too. 5,000 gets you another life. Wish this game had in-game music though. There we go, another tower found. Okay, next level is a broken path. We have 180 seconds. If there's a game of darts, it'd be a good point system. But here, it's a good time it. And it's good because we need it. So much to see, so much to do, so much to avoid. Lots of enemies on this game have eyeballs. Even though most things do these days. But they don't have a lot else. And you cannot kill an eyeball, not in this game. So avoid them at all costs. Right, jump over platform to platform. And you've got to break some blocks. Luckily, we have a weapon to do so. 50 points for each. Go around, do the other side. And that gains us access to the lift. And we need lifts to get to the top floors. So take it nice and steady. Nice and steady. Same for the other side. Go down, break it, and go up. Now, Nebulous was also followed by a less known sequel, Nebulous 2 Poco Agogo, released on the Amiga in 991. Atari ST version was in development, but it was cancelled. Right, shoot the block behind the eyeball. So many eyeballs. There's more eyeballs on this level than there is on the second level boss of Ward Beast. Okay, it's going well, but still more to do. Go up the escalator. Elevator, lift, what do we want to call them? Now, once you've reached the top of the tower, Pogo enters the door to trigger the tower's destruction mechanism. After that, the tower crumbles to the sea. Pogo then boards the submarine as he enters a bonus stage, shooting fish to gain extra score bonuses. Hopefully. Hopefully. But still more eyeballs to avoid. Up we go. Go for the door. Still more to avoid. Some go up, some go left and right. But if they hit each other, they actually change direction. Right, we've got a yellow one now. Now, if you hit something, you should change direction like that. And then go up. There we go. Boom, boom, pow. Right, balls. We can shoot these. Shoot the eyes. We cannot do. There we go. Please, let's do this. 70 seconds. Go up. And here we go. Boom, boom, pow. There's another one done. 
And there's our bonuses once again. We like bonuses around here now, don't we? And we also like towers crumbling down to the sea. Nice. Into the submarine we go. And again, we are shooting fish for additional points. Nice. It really does help for points. It really does help for extra lives. I do like shoot 'em ups. I know people know that. It's not technically the short shoot 'em ups I do like, but there we go. On we go. Okay, next level. This is Swimmer's Delight. And we have 200 seconds. Right. A little bit of slowdown on this one, but nothing all that serious. My eyeballs have been replaced by these. But like eyeballs, they are also indestructible. We've got to fight and shoot the three blocks before we can go anywhere. There's the second. Now, the US version of the game was published by US Gold and released under the title Tower Toppler. The version for the Atari 7800 was also released under the same title. The Game Boy and NES versions released of Cassilian was developed by Bit Studio and released in the United States by Trifix and in Japan by Hyro Entertainment. And in these, the character was called Julius. There we go. 160 seconds remain. On we go. A lot to see, a lot to do once again. We're taking a hit. We could go quite some distance. Now, these stairs are too steep for him, so he's got to jump on these ones. Luckily, he does have a fairly decent jump. On we go. Avoid that thing. It doesn't appear quite so much on this level because there's so many enemies here. Right, take the stairs. Not stairs, elevator, Jamie. And shoot another block. There we go. Shoot. Go back down. Now, the Game Boy and Nintendo versions was later released in Japan as Cairo Chan Land and replaced Julius with Cairo Clan. Jewels and Chugger Balls altered the enemy graphics and added a password system and a pause feature. Alright, that's enough statistics for this level, Jamie. On we go. We've got a very, very difficult section here. We've got to try and get past all these three enemies. Perfect timing is what we need there. So I might take a few hits here, but we have enough time to do it. There we go. Now watch out for wind. It can get even time to time. It's best to jump from that edge. Again, we've got to jump from here. We can't walk up there. It's too steep for him. There we go. In we go. 90 seconds remain. Tower bonus, time bonus, technique bonus, and once again, extras bonus. And once again, it destroys, and once again, we can go under the water. There we go. Once again, we must catch fish by putting them in bubbles shot by a pogo character in a submarine. Now, that you don't hear every day. I apologise if you can hear my phone. Yes, it's quite busy. I'll read them after this long play has been completed. But there we go, there's the next one. Okay, this one is called a nasty one. And it is a nasty one, but it does give you 220 seconds. Right, you've got to make sure you jump at the right places to land on the correct platform at the right time. Sometimes we need platforms to fall beneath us to get access to other platforms that you can't reach originally, like this, for example. Shoot one block, we get 50 points. Let this atom go above your head and then go up the stairs. And we shoot the second block. Right, three elevators. We take one, we take two, we take three, and we go for it. Jump over these, because these will fall beneath you. Take the elevator. Right, wait patiently. Let them go above your head. This one goes on a continuous rotation. Right. Wait for the right time. And we go up. More atoms. Right, take the third one. And then we go. Now again, you've got to jump at the right place at the right time. Right. This might not work. Right, okay, that has not worked. We've got to do it again. Go up again, and we'll go again. Third platform from the left. Now, because that platform's dropped, it's going to make it a tad difficult, but we should be fine. There we go. Boom, boom, pow. 140 seconds remain. We go in another door. Fantastic. And we have our usual bonuses for completing the level. Okay. 37,190, and that's another one destroyed. So again, we go in our submarine. Now, the game was voted best visual game of the year at the Golden Joystick Awards. The ZX Spectrum version was rated number 30 of your Sinclair official 100. 
games of all time, and the Amiga version is ranked 14th best game of all time by Amiga Power. And because you can't die in this, that makes me just sit quite simple. Right, this is the final one. Okay, final level is the Edge of Doom. The most longest and the most difficult of all. Would you expect for a final level? Right, lots to see, lots to do, and a lot to remember. Kill these bouncing balls. And make sure you're on the right platform at the right time when these evil atoms arrive on the scene. Right, shoot the button. Right, retrace our steps, jumping style. Make sure you time the door entrances perfectly to avoid these things. And they arrive so much often on this level. Right, jump here. There is an elevator at the bottom. We arrive at the 206 second mark. We'll avoid all this slot now. Tricky, very, very tricky. Right. <laughs> jump, jump. No, go again. Lucky there's a door there that takes us fairly close. Right, 190 seconds remaining. We'll go again. Yes, yes, baby. Right, all right. And we're not out of it yet. Jump. Make sure you time those pixel perfect jumps perfectly. Um, over here. Shoot that up. Forward door in. 167. Jump. Jump. In. Lots to remember. Shoot that. Go back in. Uh, back up. Back up, in, jump into wall, land on, elevator. Take the elevator up. Atom will arrive on the scene, jump to the left. Go down, platforms will disappear beneath you. Go up, and then go up again. But time it right. I'm going to wait patiently for Mr. Atom to arrive on the scene. There he is. Shoot that, and we go back. And again, I'm going to wait for him to arrive on the scene. 126 seconds remaining. There he is. Jump down. Up we go. And again. Up we go. Right, drop down. We hit the block. And we go up again. 110 seconds. More of these. More perfect timing required here. Go for the door. Shoot. And go up. Right, it's going to go down to the wire. This is... Again, wait patiently. Here he comes. Jump. Jump. Shoot. Bingo! Superb! There we go! Fantastic! We take the third door. Bingo! That was tremendous! I've been playing this game all day. And I'm not joking with you. It is actually 10 to 4 in the morning. Yes, I'm crazy. Yes, I'm mad. But this is what I do for my videos. There we go. Tremendous. Wowzers, congratulations, player. Why you completed your mission? Not a lot to the end. I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. There we go. Let's put in our high score, which is my initials, JNM. I love having an N and an M very, very close together. There we go, people. That is the end of the video. That is nebulous. I've been playing it absolutely all day, and I'm actually losing my voice. Came out in 1987, and this is Jamie from Morgan's Games. Please like, please comment, please share, and please do subscribe to my channel for Facebook fan page and Instagram, also on Twitch. Just type in Morgan's Games, you'll find it fairly easy. And please remember to click on the bell icon, that will notify you videos upload. Fantastic, we're doing these sort of videos. I do hammer beat making and live streams every Friday night, UK time, 8 o'clock. It's hard by week. Till next time, apologies about the voice. Take it easy. Ciao, bye. See ya. In particular, for the Commodore 64, releasing which gathered uh, a gold medal award for the UK magazine Zap 64. Right, hang on. So, testing one, two, three. This is going to be tough again. Right. I still cannot find myself an A3 pad. Do you know how difficult it is to try and find an A3 pad? It's so difficult. Plus, it's very expensive. A4 is not the best, but I'm going to have to deal with it. What I really would like is some kind of stand, or like a, I don't know, magnetic stand or something. I don't know anything. Read from. Okay, the start of the game is Nebulous on the C64. Nebulous is a video game created by John M. Phillips and published by Houston Consultants in the late 1980s for various systems. I can't, I can't drink and... Jamie, don't take a mouthful of drink before you start reading. 
Okay, this is another game. This is Nebulous 2 on the C64. Nebulous is a game... Uh, 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 my lord. Uh, uh, my lord, I deserve every minute of that. Released for the Amiga, Atari ST, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CBC, C64, Game Boy, NES, Atari 7800, Acorn, 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 Acorn. He's doing a bit of a moonwalk situation right there. What are you doing with that? Nebulous is a video game created by John M. Phillips and released by... Ba -ba 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 -ba. In particular, the C64 version received a gold medal award from US... UK, Jamie. The game was released for Mega, Atari ST, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, C64, Game Boy, NES, Atari Z... Released for the Amiga, Atari ST, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, C64, Game Boy, NES, Atari 7800, Acorn Archimedes, Virtual Console, Jamie, Wii Virtual Console. Wii Virtual Console. I love the fact he's just gone back to where the bar. Great game, but difficult. But let's see how we do today. Long play territory once again. Now, start the game off with three lives, but unfortunately, it's one of those games which has the evil time limit. Which is at the top middle of the corner. Jamie, like you did on your... Oh, top corner of the screen. No, it's not. It's the top middle. Just say at the top of the screen, Jamie. That's all you need to say. 